Cash Flow Diary Podcast, episode 480. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast, the podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow Game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you are here today because when it comes down to it, you are trying to build your business, right? Uh, we all are. We want to grow our cash flow, and growing cash flow is by far the number one reason <laughs> that you're here, and I appreciate you. So in the process of growing your cash flow, you may have discovered something, and that thing you may have discovered is that man, Jay, I can't do it all. <laughs> and I agree, and I totally understand. You may have reached the end of your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever capabilities, and you're going, I need help. And then you set out on this journey. And it feels like a lonely journey, because you're like, how can I find help? Good, quality help. Help that'll show up. Help that knows what they're doing. Somebody, please. That's, that's all I need is a few more people to help me row this boat to shore. Well, today's guest, he literally helps you find that help. They run a, a marketplace for freelancers known as FreeUp with three E's. So we're definitely going to ask him why are there three E's because I feel like there's a story there, but I am talking about none other than Nathan Hirsch. He's an entrepreneur and expert in remote hiring and e-commerce. Now, what I like about this is that it's not someone who woke up one day that said, hey, you know what? I think I'll create a marketplace for freelancers where people who are needing some assistance can find them. No, no, no. It's someone who's been through the process because at the end of the day, he has sold over $30 million online and has appeared on a number of podcasts uh, around the world. But you've got to understand this. That's not done by doing it all by yourself. So we're definitely going to be talking to someone who knows how to go out there, figure it out, and most importantly, find those individuals that you and I are looking for so that our enterprises can grow. So let's make sure that we are ready to listen, ready to learn, and most importantly, ready to take some action as we hear from Nathan Hirsch. Nathan, how are you doing? Jay, I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. You are quite welcome. And uh, I'm sure to some that are listening right now, they're like, oh my God, finally, somebody who can help me find some people. <laughs> <laughs> so um, with this being the first time that you're here, however, uh, I have to ask you the same question I tend to ask everybody the first time that they're here. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So I, I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes. You know, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, Superman, Spider-Man, all of those people. Because I think superheroes and entrepreneurs have a ton of things in common. Chief among them, uh, as a entrepreneur, occasionally I can imagine myself running around town using our products and services to save our customers and occasionally wearing a cape or tights. Yeah. But also, like a superhero, an entrepreneur has a beginning. So, as I mentioned, Spider-Man, there was a time where he was just a kid going to school, doing his thing, taking some photos, minding his own business, probably trying to get some pizza money and impress Mary Jane. That was his, like, goal. And then one day, he gets bit by a spider, discovers that, hey, I I've got uh, some special superhuman abilities, and I get to choose to use them for good or for evil. So, my question to you is as follows. Before free up. But before even the idea, the concept, before you even got involved in, in e-commerce or any of the things that, that you have done today, what we want to know is, who is Nathan Hirsch? 
<laughs> yeah, it's a great question. So I grew up in Longmeadow, Massachusetts, and my, I actually lived in East Longmeadow, but I went to school in Longmeadow, the town over, because my, my dad was a teacher at that high school. Both my parents were teachers. So oh, wow. I always grew, grew up with the mentality that I would go to college, get a real job, work for 40 years, retire. And I, when I was in, in high school or when I was going to school, the town over for me, everyone's parents, they were doctors, lawyers, dentists, really successful business owners. They lived in big houses. They had nice cars and we weren't broke by any means, but my parents were both teachers. We were <laughs> average, average off. So I always grew up wanting more, uh, thinking that it was a little unfair, like every, every kid does when they um, want something they can't have. And it was never more evident than during summer vacation. My parents made me get 40 hours, 50 hour a week, summer jobs every summer from middle school up. So all my friends were outside playing, enjoying their summer. I was inside working and I worked for <laughs> the Aaron's corporation. I worked for Firestone. And that's really when that click went off because I learned so much about sales, about customer service, about managing people but I also hated every second of it. I hated working for other people. I hated listening to other people's directions. It was corporate, so my ideas weren't heard. And I just knew that if I was gonna work for someone else, I was gonna be miserable for the rest of my life. And when I got to college, I looked at it as a ticking clock. I had to figure out a way to start a business before I graduated, or I was going into the corporate world and I was never getting out. Wow. I love <laughs> I love it. No one has ever described college as a ticking clock, <laughs> but I, I get it. I totally get it. So I, I've got. It. I'm curious now because both parents were teachers, and and I'm glad you hit on it. I I'm curious. What was that conversation like? Hey, mom, dad, I don't want a job. I want my own business. How did that go? So my parents are awesome. They are the most supportive people. Um, they definitely had reservations. I mean, I can't tell you how many times. Um, so I had an internship in college at Firestone. I worked at Aaron's first, then moved to Firestone. I had a job offer on the table when I was going to graduate college, a really good job offer with great benefits. And I started this Amazon business out of my college dorm room that I had grown and grown and it was enough to live on. And I was actually making more at, when I was at the internship working, I was making more on my phone from the Amazon business than I was on the internship. So one day I told my parents that I was going to quit and we had some very long conversations. They, are you sure this is the right decision? Are you making a big mistake? Um, but at the end of the day, they are very supportive. The second I told them what the decision was, okay, how can we help? How can we support you? Um, and, and they've been supportive ever, ever since. And I think once they started to see success, I think they're, they're, that peace of mind kind of kicked in where they knew that I wasn't going to end up homeless on the street at their front door one day. <laughs> right. We don't want you to come. We love you, son, but we want you to stay gone. So we just tell us, what's the plan? What's the plan? No, totally understood. So um, you, you mentioned this earlier and you said it again about uh, having an Amazon or a business uh, and selling things on Amazon. Um, I'm, tell us more about that. Like, how did that idea come to you? I mean, you're, you're supposed to be focusing on this internship, but yet on your phone, you're, you're selling stuff all across the globe. Yeah. So I mentioned that I got to college and I started trying to figure out how to start a business. So I started hustling a little bit and I noticed that the school bookstore was ripping me off. I was paying hundreds of dollars for books <laughs> you noticed at the that end of too? the semester. <laughs> Everyone noticed yeah, it, right? right? Exactly. Okay. This is good. Keep going. Well, I'm the kind of person that when something's pissing me off, I try to take action and fix it. And I started, I took that money that I'd made from the summer jobs and I started my own textbook business. I created a referral program. People started talking about me throughout the school. Um, they could make money just by telling their friends to go to me. Before I know it, I have lines out the door of people trying to sell me their books to the point where I actually get a cease and desist letter from my college to nice. knock it off because I was stealing too much of their business. Nice. Um, from from there, I mean, you don't sell books for very long without learning about Amazon. This was 2008, 2009. Sure. There were no courses. There were no gurus. No one knew what Amazon was going to become. They were just becoming more than a bookstore. So I didn't think books were a long-term solution. I knew I was going to graduate at some point. I, I thought we'd all be on tablets by now anyway, which hasn't exactly happened. But I knew I had to try something else. So I started experimenting. And 
I looked at products I was familiar with as a 20 year old guy, <laughs> um, sporting equipment, sp- um, outdoor supplies, video games, computers, TVs. And I just failed over and over and over. I couldn't get anything to sell besides these damn books. And it wasn't until I branched out of my comfort zone and found a deal on baby products that my business really took off and I dropped the books. So if you can imagine me as a 20 year old single college guy selling millions of dollars of baby products out of my dorm room, <laughs> just, that was me. <laughs> I'm just making sure you said that. I was like, when you said that, I was like, it sounded like he said baby products. Was that for real? Okay. Baby products. How, what led you to baby? Like, how did you go? Okay, baby. I mean, how did you even recognize a deal on baby products? You're not familiar with them. Or you weren't at that time. Yeah, it, it, and I'd love to tell you that I put months of research in and, and examined lots of different industries, but it really was just trying every little thing. I mean, I would spend hours and hours searching through deal sites, searching through different manufacturer sites, retailer sites, trying to identify products in some kind of pattern that I could make sustainable. And for whatever reason, when I found baby products, I got really good at listing them, at finding the deals. If you look over, people would look over my shoulder in class and there would just be tabs of baby products open. <laughs> <laughs> and and I got really good at it. Okay. Um, that That couldn't have been further out of your comfort zone. I, I, I can't imagine if, if there was anything further out of your comfort zone, but I get it. All right. Now, you you said something, though, that I think every entrepreneur needs to hear because uh, you clearly didn't want to work for someone else if you're down to selling baby products. But most importantly, you said you failed over and over and over and, and over. What kept you going? So there's two things that I learned from that. <laughs> One, I had to stop being afraid of failure because nothing is more frustrating than than not achieving your goal. I mean, I had a goal to get off textbooks within a month and, month, and then it went to two months and three months and four months, and I'm still selling books. And it just – that determination that, hey, you're going to figure it out and you're not going to give up until you find the solution. There's no other option. The other lesson that I learned was to really not care what other people think. I mean, I couldn't even begin to explain to people that I was selling baby products on Amazon. No one knew what that even meant. <laughs> no one knew like you could be an Amazon seller, that that was a job that would make money. People thought I was a little bit crazy. So you had to kind of block the negativity out of your mind at that point. Yeah, it wasn't exactly cool or cachet or in vogue. It was why don't you get a job? I'm sure. <laughs> if anything, I got it. I got it. All right, cool. So then you really have got to bridge this gap. How do we go from baby products to freelancers? Sure. So I start making money with this Amazon business and I should probably start paying taxes, right? So I meet with an accountant. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. And one of the first people, one of the first questions he asks is, when are you going to hire your first person? And I go, why would I do that? I have to invest my time into someone else. They're going to be taking money out of my pocket. They're not going to do as good of a job as me. They're not going to care about the business. Lots of excuses. And he just laughed in my face. And he pretty much said, you're going to learn this lesson out on your own. So sure enough, my first busy season comes around. The fourth quarter, everyone's buying toys and baby products for Christmas. And I get destroyed. I'm working 20 hours a week doing listing products, customer service, angry people that don't get their presents on time. My social life tanks. My grades start to plummet. And somehow I make it out to January because I'm a workaholic. I, I battle through it. But when I get to January, I think to myself, I can never let that happen again. I need to start hiring people. <laughs> so I post a job on Facebook and I get this message from this guy in my business law class and I do a quick interview. I hire him, ends up being one of my best hires. He's my business partner either today. His name's Connor Gillivan. He's awesome. So I think to myself, wow, hiring is easy. Like, this is so great. I post a job, (laughs) someone responds, I hire them. My life gets easier. I make more money. Well, I proceed to make bad hire after bad hire after bad hire, wasting time, money, energy, the business not growing as fast as I want. I quickly realized that hiring college kids, not very reliable. And I also figured out pretty fast that no 30-year-old expert takes me seriously. They don't want to work for me as a 20-year-old entrepreneur. So I get thrown into the remote hiring world, the Upworks, the Fivers, um, really based on necessity. It was the only way option for me to go. 
hiring freelancers to handle high-level tasks, outsourcing um, to the Philippines for more day-to-day operations. And I get really good at it. I, I learn a lot, obviously, when you're dealing with people in different cultures and different locations. Um, but I, I want something faster because all my time goes from growth and expanding this business to interview after interview after interview after interview. And one day I just got sick of it. I did eight straight hours of interviews. I didn't find one person that I liked. And I thought there had to be a better way. So I built my own marketplace where we get thousands of applicants every week, take the top 1%, let them in, make them available to people quickly with great support and no turnover protection. So that's really how the whole concept of free up came about. That's pretty funny because it, it again, I, I hear the same thing that happened um, when, when you were got upset at the bookstore, you got upset at the bookstore. So you did something about it and you got upset at this process of <laughs> trying to find people, which a lot of people are upset about, by the way. And you said, you know what, I'm going to do something about it. But I'm just curious because what on earth possessed you just to post the job on Facebook? That's a that's a that's a very non traditional way to go. Hey, I know I'll just post it on Facebook and of course somebody will come. Well, I mean, I was in college. I was surrounded by college students. I had a lot of college friends on my Facebook. It seemed like the the quickest way to find someone. Wow. I, I mean, now knowing what you know today. Do you do you realize how fortunate you got with that? Yeah, like I said, it, it was one of the luckiest things. I tell Connor that all the time. I'm so happy I met him. We we complement each other very well. We have the same vision. We have the same values, but we have totally opposite skill sets, which is the best thing you want out of a business partner. We complement each other so well. So it, 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 there's definitely an area of luck when hiring. I mean. You can hire, you can have five different people hire the same person and three of them have great experiences and two of them have bad, for whatever reason, that person wasn't a right fit. And I was able to find that right fit right from the beginning. Yeah. I, I can't even imagine. Um, I can't even imagine that, like, that's why it would have never occurred to me just post it on Facebook. And of course someone will be there, but okay. It worked. Now with, with that being said though, um, tell us did the so the next uh, busy season did you were you still having to do 20 hour days or was it did it get better it definitely got better one thing that i learned about the amazon business is no matter how much you prepare for busy season it's always crazy there hasn't been one busy season <laughs> that i haven't pulled at least two or three all nighters just catching up after black friday cyber monday um i actually don't run my Amazon business anymore. We closed it down in January this year um, to focus on free up because it's booming. Um, and, and it's one of the things that I don't miss um, about busy season, or I, I guess I'm excited about the fourth quarter now because I can spend more time with friends and family <laughs> and, and not just filling orders and, and doing customer service. You're like, oh no, Christmas is coming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's actually kind of funny. All right, cool. So uh, d- tell us then, uh, the, this this free up. Um, uh, one of the basic questions you know that I, I've got for you. You you spell it free up with three e's. So that's f r e e e u p. What's that third e about? Hello there, entrepreneur. This is Jay Massey, and what I want to say to you is that the number one mistake that I have ever made in business, number one, has been waiting too long to do the books, waiting too long to get the bookkeepers, the accountants, the CPAs, the CFOs involved. And I don't want you to make that same mistake. That mistake cost me over six figures. And now for a significant discount, you have the ability to get your books together using Fresh books. So what I want you to do is I want you to go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary. Again, that's gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary. Freshbooks is the easy to use software designed to help you, the small business owner, the freelancer, get organized and save time on invoicing, getting paid faster, keeping those books in order so that it becomes a bonus for you to do your taxes as opposed to a burden. Go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary and get started today. And now let's get back to the rest of the story. So we love the name free up. Um, The whole concept is free up your time. It's what every business owner wants when they're hiring people who has two weeks to find a graphic designer when you need them today. (laughs) Right. Um, 
Exactly. So we, we love the name free up Verizon actually owns the one with two E's made them an offer. They didn't accept it. Um, I don't know if there's any amount of money that they'll accept it, but our whole premise was e-commerce. So the third E stands for e-commerce. When we started free up, we were mostly um, towards Amazon sellers, eventually e-commerce as a whole. Um, and, and so that's where we kind of kept the 30 to make it e-commerce. Although now we work with marketing agencies, real estate agents, all different types of businesses. So we might have to come up with a, a creative way to remove the e-commerce, but keep the 30. Yeah, no, totally understood. So um, share with us, if you will, for those who don't know, who've not been to your site, give us the, a general understanding of, of the entrepreneurs listening. How do they find value in what you guys are up to? Yeah. So you go on Upwork or Fiverr, you post a job, you get 50 people to apply, you interview them one by one, and it just takes forever. And I wanted something faster. So with free up, you create a free account. There's no sign up fee, no monthly fee, no minimums, no obligation. It's in our best interest to get you someone you actually like that helps you grow your business. Instead of browsing, you click request a freelancer. You tell us exactly what you're looking for. We introduce you to someone within a business day. And then it's almost like a Tinder for hiring. You can meet with them, make sure you like them. If you like them, you click hire and you're good to go. If you don't, you click pass and you provide us a little feedback and we get you someone else based on that feedback. It's a very fast process. Um, I mentioned we have 24 seven support to make sure you have a great experience. People that cover my Skypes and emails at all times um, when I'm on a podcast or sleeping, my calendar, my phone number is right on the website where I'm there to help. And then lastly, we know how frustrating it is to hire someone you really like and only to have them walk out the door or quit in the middle of a project. With us, it rarely happens. Of course, it's real life, it could. If it does, we cover all replacement costs and get you a new person right away, so you never take a step back. So that's really what we're all about, the pre-vetting, the speed, the customer service, and the protection. Interesting, and now you say you've expanded past uh, the services of, uh, of just e-commerce. Give us an idea, you know, like say someone for myself, what, 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 cause I, we don't currently do e-commerce, uh, thought about that whole Amazon thing, but then I go, no, never mind. Um, so, but I'm curious as to if I'm not in e-commerce, what, what type of services, what type of freelancers would I possibly be able to find on your marketplace? Yeah. So in your situation, we have a lot of podcast hosts, people that have had me on that have become clients. They'll hire podcast editors, video editors, audio editors, um, people to build their website, people to run their social media, people to run Facebook ads. Um, I mean, we have, we offer over a hundred skill sets on the marketplace, it, oh, everything ranging from data entry, outsource tasks, all the way up to top marketing experts and everything in between. Interesting. And now I'm asking for myself, do you have any uh, individuals who are in the short-term rental space, i.e. familiar with platforms like Booking.com, Travelocity, Airbnb, Expedia? We do. And we work with a lot of people in the real estate space as well. I think every real estate agent out there or anyone that has to do with real estate in some way um, usually starts off as a solo operation and wants to scale from there. And there's such a need for either remote help or just project-based help to help you get to the next level. Interesting. And so, okay, well, that actually then leads into kind of the next thing. It You could find someone not just on a, a one-time help me through this project, but someone who maybe you do have something that's you know going to be a solid 20 hours a week for a while. Yeah. I mean, we have clients who have hired six full-time customer service reps in the Philippines, and they've had the same freelancers for three years. We have other people who hire a graphic designer for a one-time project and never talk to them again. And we have other people who have <laughs> hired a, a US person and bought them out and made them an employee in their business. So you, there's lots of different options. There's no minimum. There's no maximum. Um, it, it's in our best interest to get you the right person with the right fit that makes sense for what you're trying to do. Okay. Now you, and you mentioned something that I wanted to cover for all, for, especially for the U.S. based entrepreneurs. Uh, when it comes to working with you guys, how, how does the, like the taxes and, you know, employee taxes, all that stuff work? Is that something you guys handle or the, the freelancer themselves handles? Where, where does that get come into play? Sure. So we don't offer employees, um, right. any freelancers that are U.S. that are on our platform. Um, our contractors, we make sure they're business owners, they're offering their services elsewhere. Um, like I said, we've had people that have bought them out um, and 
turn them into employees and put them on their own payroll. I wouldn't say it happens often, but it does. Um, but these are business owners that are offering their services. Um, we handle, well, we don't, so it's not 1099, it's a 1099K. We use PayPal as a payment processor, um, but it's all done through there. Interesting. Got it. Got it. So in this process of now providing this service to to entrepreneurs and, and helping us go out there, build our organizations bigger, better, better, faster, etc. Um, and having gone through your own experience, uh, when is the best time? When should someone consider bringing someone on? I mean, we want to do this before our CPAs laughs at us. So we're, we're just I'm just curious to hear your thoughts now. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite question. So th there's two ways to go about hiring. The first way is to figure out everything you do on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis and figure out how do you get your hours back? What would you do with an extra two hours in the day, 20 hours in the week? And you do that by creating systems and processing processes and outsourcing it. We hire people in the Philippines, around the world that have years of experience but they're there to follow our systems, our processes. You could also hire an internal employee. You're not hiring US contractors. The other way is you figure out how do I turn weaknesses into strengths? One of the best activities that Connor and I ever did was we sat across from each other and we said, you're bad at this. <laughs> and we hit each other to the gut and we wrote everything down. And at the end, we realized we complement each other very well, but we also had a list of things that neither of us were good at, but we were doing them every single week. So we started hiring specialists, experts, people that turn these weaknesses into strengths. So there's two ways to hire, getting your time back, getting out of day-to-day -day operations that aren't growth focused and turning weaknesses into strengths. The question was, how do you, when do you know when to hire? It's when you either get to the point in your business where you're, you're stuck in that day-to-day -day operations and you're unable to grow, or you need something in order to focus your attention on growth, or you're just doing too many weaknesses that it's, turn, it's, it's not helping your business go forward and you need to hire someone to take over those weaknesses. Okay. So... All right. Let me OK, let me say it this way, then. Um, one of those things I know for myself uh, and again, I'm talking to myself, but also as an example for everybody listening, there's the this challenge of. We'll call it just customer service in general. Uh, it's hard to say this is what you're doing. I mean, you're waiting. You're it's it can feel like it's a reactive position. How on earth do you hire for that? For customer service? Yeah, because, I mean, you it, when you're saying write out what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, well, I, I don't know what I'm going to be doing until the customer says that there's a problem. Yeah, so I just hired for customer service. Um, this, is, this is how I went about it. I figured out all the different ways that people contact me. So it, it could be for my Amazon business, it was returns. It was, hey, asking for a tracking number. It was um, complaints, whatever it was. So you branch those out different types and then you come up with canned responses for each one and almost like a tree of, hey, this happens, you do this, this happens, this is how you react you're probably going to get about 80% of it. You're never going to remember the whole 100% right from the beginning. But you hire someone, you have them learn that 80%, you have them read the documents, you have them watch you do some emails, you have them write some drafts, and you double check them before you send them. And after that, once they take over, as new situations come in that you didn't account for, you continue to update your docs. You continue to write, write out your SOPs. So it's, customer service is probably one of the harder ones just because there's so many different situations, but it's one of the most important ones to get actual SOPs in place because it's so hard to just grab someone with 10 years of customer service experience and say, do my customer service. There needs to be some kind of process to follow. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, you, you said uh, a, a phrase that some people may not be familiar with, that being SOPs. I know what they are, but for those that might not, uh, why don't you elaborate a little bit on that? But And could we hire somebody? to make our SOPs? Um, yes, you can hire someone to make your SOPs. We have lots of freelancers that that's the service that you offer. Um, but SOP is a standard operating procedure. It's basically how your business runs, the day-to-day -day operations. And I always recommend doing it in documents, um, not in videos, only because if you're a startup um, like me and we're three years in, I still consider us a startup, 
your processes are always changing. They're always improving. At least you should be trying to always change and improve them and encouraging ideas from others to improve them. So by having a central doc that has, hey, this is our process for everything. And every time a new situation comes up, you say, hey, here's A, B, C, D. Here's the last step we put in place to prevent that same issue from happening again. And it goes in the doc and everyone knows about the new process and procedure. That's how you make a business scalable. That's how you grow. It can't just be reaction at all times. Excellent. Now, now that you've uh, mastered the ability to add more people to the team and you're providing this service, um, as you look back, is it something that you go, man, I'm glad I did? Is it, uh, is it, or is it one of those, you know, I wish I had done it sooner or is like, man, uh, I should have waited. It's always one of the things you wish you had done it sooner. <laughs> I mean, I, I look at a process I just implemented this week, and in my mind, I'm like, Nate, you're an idiot. You should have done this six months ago. But there, 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 there's so much to do as an entrepreneur. I mean, right. I could work 100 hours a week, and I have freelancers and VAs bill me about 800 hours every week, and there's still endless stuff to do. So you, you, never, you never get caught up as an entrepreneur, but what you can do is come up with really solid systems and processes that you continue to build on, continue to add to and continue to hire really good specialized or expert people to continue to turn weaknesses into strengths and take your business to the next level. Indeed, totally understood. So um, for those that have listened this far and and probably want to find out more, you know, see what you guys are up to, what's going to be the best way for them to catch up with you? Yeah. So if you go to freeup.com with three E's, my calendar is right at the top. You can book a free meeting with me. I'd love to talk to you about your business and how I can help. Um, if you create a free account to hire freelancers, mention this podcast, get a $25 credit to try us out free of charge. Um, you can check us out on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Feel free to connect with me. And lastly, we have a lot of great hiring content on the free up blog and on the free up YouTube channel. Indeed. Um, as we wind down, I've got a question for you because I'm curious to hear your answer. Um, let, let's pretend that, you know, an entrepreneur listening is like, man, you know what? I, I'm finally going to do this thing. Nathan is right. I can make my business grow. I can do this. Um, but you know, like I know, is that when we reach these, what I like to call uh, the, the precipice of decision, there's a there's a companion that comes with us. Oftentimes that companion is in the form of a voice. And the voice says things like, are are you for real? Do you do you honestly think that you can hire other people and that somebody is going to help you build your business? Or it, it says, you know what? What are you thinking? Do you not remember the last time you tried? You know, and it reminds us uh, of all the things that we're not and what we haven't done. And for some people, they're even related to that voice. So my question to you is as follows. Let's pretend that uh, the person listening is actually going to follow through, Nate. This time they're going to make it happen. And they're going to do so in 24 to 48 hours from right now. What would you suggest that they do? Sure. So I have a five-step hiring process. Step one is figure out, are you trying to, um, what we talked about before, take things off your plate or turn weaknesses into strengths. So identify what you want to hire for. Step two is identify what that perfect person looks like. Is it an internal employee? Is it a virtual assistant in the Philippines? Is it project-based, full-time? What kind of attitude, communication skills, background do they have to have? So identify what your perfect person looks like. If you don't know what you're looking for, it's going to be very hard for you to find it. Step three is interview. And when you're interviewing, don't just look for skill. Look for skill, but attitude and communication as well. Find someone who's passionate about what they do, who cares about you as a client, who cares about your business, who can communicate at the highest possible level. Step four is set expectations up front. The biggest mistake entrepreneurs make is they hire someone and they throw them in and they don't get on the same page from the beginning, which leads to a lot of gray area disputes. He said, she said down the line, spend that extra time getting on the same page right from the beginning and step five and the all important step of that feedback loop. Make sure people know what you like, what you don't like, how they're doing. Keep in mind, if you're hiring freelancers, they work for lots of different clients who have different expectations and a different understanding of what's right and what's wrong. So by providing feedback and making it a situation where feedback is encouraged on both ends, you're going to have a better relationship, a better hiring experience, and it's going to set you up for success long term. Love it. I definitely appreciate the the way that you attack things. You're like, you know, when you get upset about it, you do something about it. You don't just complain about it. And, and, and that's 
that is commendable. I wish more people did that. And uh, I definitely appreciate you taking the time to share with us your, your knowledge, your wisdom, and insight here today at the Cashflow Diary. Thanks so much for having me. I had a great time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean? That means go over to free up F R E E E U P dot com. Why? Because you know it's past due. You are overdue. I mean, you have received that 90 day past due should have hired somebody notice already. So go make it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, your business can grow, but you must do so as well. It's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time. <laughs>